Why did the Democratic Republic of the Congo join the EAC? The Democratic Republic of the Congo has become the East African Communities, or EAC's seventh member, significantly expanding the trade bloc's territory, giving it access to the Atlantic Ocean and significantly increasing the number of French speakers in what began as a club of former British colonies. In 2019, the DRC applied for membership, helping to strengthen trade and political ties with its East African neighbors. This treaty will allow Congolese citizens to freely travel to other countries and trade will become much faster, simpler and cheaper, benefiting businesses and consumers worldwide. Except for Kenya, the country shares borders with all EAC members and hopes to attract more investors from the region. By joining the bloc, the Democratic Republic of the Congo gains better access to facilities such as the Indian Ocean ports of Dar es Salaam and Mombasa. Import taxes for goods accepted as being made in the Democratic Republic of the Congo will be eliminated or greatly reduced when entering other countries, and transporting goods will become much cheaper. Before the treaty was signed for a Congolese to get travel documents to visit Uganda, they must pay $45 or £35 at the DR Congo side of the border, and when they arrive in Uganda, they must pay $50 for a visa. Then there are charges for a COVID-19 test, so you pay about $120 in total. By joining the community, the Congolese people want to be satisfied with the benefits of intra-community trade. But then they also want to maintain relations based on peace and security for all. The inclusion of the Democratic Republic of the Congo into the Common Market and Customs Union is regarded rather as historic as it opened up new opportunities in the social, economic and political realms. However, there are some difficulties. The EAC has not been without its problems. Political interest and suspicion have previously plagued the Union. And now, conflict in the Democratic Republic of the Congo adds to these difficulties. With that being said, it's safe to say that everyone is probably thinking how will all this affect all the members of the EAC bloc? The East African Community is a regional intergovernmental organization consisting of six partner states Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda, South Sudan, the United Republic of Tanzania, and the Republic of Uganda, with headquarters in Arusha, Tanzania. The EAC currently has a population of 193 million people, and with the DRC's admission, that number would rise to 280 million. This large market will also now benefit everyone in the region. For the benefit of its people, the DRC will be able to easily buy and sell to the rest of East Africa. The Democratic Republic of the Congo joins the bloc with a large market of 90 million people and the potential to contribute to an expanded market and investment opportunities to boost the EAC common markets. The country's entry into the regional bloc also presents a new opportunity for firms and member states to diversify their exports within EAC's geographical advantages, natural resources, and global reputation. The community has enormous potential to set the pace for Africa's continental free trade zone and lead the continent into a new era of trading with the rest of the world on an equal and mutually beneficial basis. The DRC's ascension to the East African community is a watershed moment for the East African community and one of the most immediate consequences is the addition of 90 million people to the East African community's population. This means that the East African community will have more than 280 million people, which is a massive market in and of itself. The second major impact here is the resources that the DRC brings to the East African region in the form of high-value minerals. High-value minerals like fertile farmland and water resources as well as the potential to expand power generation are all being brought to the East African community by the DRC, which could be a major milestone for the region. The Congolese are concerned about how joining this community will fundamentally change the Congolese people's situation. The DRC is a very wealthy country and allegedly has about $24 trillion in wealth, which is the combined GDP of the United States and Europe. It has also known over 6 million people who have died as a result of the conflict in the Democratic Republic of the Congo because of its neighbors, 
who are members of the Eastern African communities, in particular, Uganda. So, the Congolese are looking at how this is going to change the lives of the communities, and then if there will be a mechanism where the people of Congo, being in the community, could use the court in the EAC to solve some of the pending issues such as the International Court of Justice ruling that Uganda owes Congo $300 million and others. The DRC currently imports a lot of things from Zambia, which is not a member of the EAC, and the majority that is food. So then I imagine that Uganda, Kenya and Rwanda would be positioning themselves to supply some of the food to the DRC, so trade would really improve. Infrastructural development would really take off because for the first time in the region's history, the Indian Ocean is now connected to the Atlantic. As a result of this, the potential for cross-border railways as well as cross-border roads and bridges will be enormous. Equally, security. The Democratic Republic of the Congo has been fighting indigents on its border with Uganda alone, but then there is now a regional approach to insecurity that will benefit everyone in the East African region. Hence, with the insecurity problem hanging over their heads, people are thinking, does the EAC now have the ability to stabilize the DRC? Well, we believe the EAC has the capacity. The situation of Congo is not new, it has been going on for two decades, and there had been success when the other Afghan nations engaged with them. For example, in 2012, Congo had a rebellion and 23 rebels supported by Rwanda invaded the DRC. Then a member of the EAC had a positive impact on them. Tanzanian forces were deployed in the DRC and their special forces intervened on the ground to hold the movement of the rebels, demonstrating that Afghan solutions to Afghan problems do exist. So we know for surety it's a possibility. Then there is an even greater discuss. There has been talks about trade getting better from the very beginning. But actually, how will it affect ordinary citizens in the EAC? Well, that is left to be seen in due time, but then we hope that the EAC has learned from the mistakes of the West Africa's ECOWAS. For the growth and development of each individual in the community, the EAC members, including leaders, must build strong institutions, ensure good governance, which has been elusive in the DRC for years, and focus on infrastructural growth. It's a well-known fact that ordinary people are hoping for a change. What changes do we expect to see in the people? Obviously, the ordinary people in DRC are not currently discussing DRC's accession to the EAC. On the ground, this is the reality. It is primarily in the country's political circles and political elites. What the families are concerned about is how they will live a better life. When they only make $1 per day, how are they going to pay for the children's tuition and school fees? Are they going to be able to feel safe in the country? And how this ascension will help all of this? Taking into consideration that more than half of Congo's population is made up of young people under the age of 18 who are a driving force for labor in the heart of Africa and have the potential to completely transform the continent. So, if the EAC addresses the basic needs like taking the initiative to build schools and hospitals, create a variety of jobs to help better their lives, as well as security and stability, this will go a long way to aid the ordinary people which will completely transform the entire East African community and the entire African community. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, the East African community grew at a rate of 6% from 2015 to 2019. And above all other countries in the region, with the exception of war-torn South Sudan. So this is what's been embraced by bringing in Congo's DRC's population of 100 million people. The region's growth potential will be even greater in terms of opportunities. As previously stated, the greatest gains will be realized through trade. Development of infrastructure, as earlier mentioned, will go a long way in improving trade and easing transportation throughout the EAC, particularly railways, roads and airports. For the EAC to reap the many benefits of this land, there must be trust. It is extremely important and the only downside is that it can't be bought but earned. It is only through trust that the EAC members will be able to address some of the insecurity issues that we discussed earlier. The growth and success can be guaranteed if the leaders integrate by fostering close alliances, private sector development, infrastructure development, agricultural development, and so on. With all the difficulties the EAC is facing, 
it is not impossible for them to find a solution. Regardless of the enormous challenges that DRC faces, there will be massive benefits if this is handled properly, and we believe that this will have an impact on the young people. Hence, the outstanding needs to solve the DRC's decades-long problem. No outsider will come to help with this problem. It is left to the African countries, African Union, the East African community to deal with it. Good governance is something that all East African community countries require in order to move forward with confidence and help future generations benefit from these types of integration efforts. Thank you for watching and please remember to hit the like button and if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do.